A very good morning to you and welcome to our Sunday morning service. We begin with a verse from the book of Nahum. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. And so we begin with these sentences, O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. We say these words together. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We need to have a time of confession and we're going to think particularly today about the words that we say. Words have extraordinary power to heal but also to hurt. And so as uh, these verses about speech come up on the screen now, let's ask the Holy Spirit to show us those things that we might have said or not said which we shouldn't or should have done. Where our choice of words has concealed the riches of your character, has distorted our understanding of your nature, and has kept you hidden from those who seek you. Nurturing God, forgive us. Where we have created you in our own image, have thought of you in purely human terms, have used words to tie you down and box you in. Renewing God, forgive us. Where the language we use for each has upheld sinful power structures instead of subverting them. Where our words have excluded either women or privileged men. Where our words have silenced the poor and ignored the disadvantaged. Where our words have dishonoured ethnicity and rejected diversity. Energising God, forgive us. So hear now the words of Jesus for all who are truly sorry and who seek to renew their lives and their language. Jesus says this, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace and follow me. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and forgive you your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we're going to sing together our opening hymn.
So it's another Thursday evening in Froil, and we're about to bang the drums, clap our hands with our lovely neighbours to say thank you to the NHS and to all those wonderful vocational people who are helping us with vital jobs in the country right now. But I'm also here this evening to say three cheers to God um, and to thank him for being in our lives. Since I've come to Froil, I've been on a journey um, and we're all on journeys, life's journeys, but one of the things that's happened to me in Froil is that um, I've been persuaded to discover my journey of faith uh, in a bit more detail. I was confirmed when I was 13, 14. Um, I, I really resisted to start off with because I already knew enough. I didn't need to know any more, but I was really persuaded by um, the people in the benefice and in the church who, just by the manner in which they hold themselves, told me that there was something, there was something going on inside that I didn't have that they did. So I was finally persuaded to go on the Alpha course, um, met some lovely people, was really looked after well, um, and so I discovered another part of my journey and uh, a, a, another richness, um, an extra dimension to life um, that um, right now in this difficult time I found of great comfort. Of course there's no church as we usually know it in Froyle, there's no bells, there's no flowers, there's no music, there's no sherry. But you know what guys, if you look at the website, look in the Village magazine, gosh there's all sorts of energy. So. Um, one of the things I wanted to do this evening was to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who's contributed uh, to these wonderful um, online experiences that we're all having. Um, and, um, uh, you know, it, for me personally, it's helping me through. One of the things I'm quite sad about is that my daughter is alone in a flat in Argentina in Buenos Aires. So for her and myself to go to church together virtually on a Sunday is pretty special. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart to Jan and his team. Um, I'm also getting through because I'm going to a meeting with people regularly. Uh, we're doing Bible study and the encouragement that I've had there and the wonderful discussions that we have um, is again part of the journey that I'm on. So I miss everybody um, but church is is all around us and I'm experiencing a new kind of church and one of the things they want us to do is to spread the word so whilst we thank our NHS 
um, and all those lovely people tonight. I also want to bang the drum for God and thank him for Jesus and thank him for the sacrifice that Jesus gave to save us all. Take care. Stay safe. Before Christopher comes to speak to us, uh, we're going to have uh, our reading. Hi, my name is Ali Maud, and the reading today comes from 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 14 to 17. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we, who are many, are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Let me start with a prayer. Father in heaven, you have created us for fellowship with you. Help each of us this morning to hear you speaking through your word. And as you are the God who brings things into being by the power of your word, please bring understanding and help us have the appropriate response to these truths. Please guide us as we seek to follow Jesus. Amen. We're in week five of our sermon series on the marks of the church, outlined in Acts 2.42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. This week we're looking at the first of two talks on the breaking of bread. St. Paul in 1 Corinthians is dealing with a troubled church. He has in the previous chapters taught us that eating meat sacrificed to idols was a questionable practice. Our reading today, Paul exhorts his readers to a better way. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. The Corinthians were flirting with idolatry. They were told to keep on fleeing from idolatry. God hates it. Idolatry is the worship of a false god, which results in a false religion that takes people away from Christ. The Corinthians were not to dally with idolatry, flirt with it or tolerate it. The liberal Christian in our culture who reveals, who revels, sorry, the, the liberal Christian in our culture who revels in their God-given freedom in Christ can so easily compromise much. Our culture is pluralistic, showing tolerance and even acceptance of almost everything. Pluralism is bringing us many false gods to worship. Allah, the New Age God, the Liberal God and the Free Will God, and the gods of various other religions. But Paul calls them all out. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Paul may have been speaking sarcastically because they thought themselves so wise, but were actually foolish because of their association with idolatry. Or Paul may have been appealing to them as sensible, intelligent people who ought to see the dangers of flirting with temple worship. But he nails it all down in the next verse. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give a thanks give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ and is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ. Paul wants us to make, wants to make one basic point in this verse. To participate in something is to have fellowship with it. He uses the analogy of the Lord's table or should I say the Eucharist or Holy Communion. When Christians partake of the bread and wine we're actually having fellowship with Jesus Christ. This verse helps us understand that the Lord's table is more than just a memorial or a remembrance of the death of Christ. Christians actually share in the bloody, 
blood and body of Christ. The Greek word used can mean participation or fellowship or share. Somehow, when partaking of the Lord's table, Christ is spiritually present in a way that is not present at other times. By faith, we sense his presence with us at the table more than we may on other occasions. The Lord's table is referenced to some by the word sacrament. A sacrament is an oath. The word sacrament was used for an oath of allegiance which soldiers of the Roman legion took to show their loyalty to the emperor. Therefore, every time Christians gather at Holy Communion, they renew their allegiance to the Lord, confessing their devotion to him who has saved them by his sovereign grace. In verse 16, when Paul talks about participation in the blood of Christ or participation in the body of Christ, the word he uses for participation is koinonia. Paul is emphasizing how the, they are a, participating in a fellowship with the Lord. In other words, it is the aspect of our solidarity with Christ, our relationship to him, our oneness with him, in addition to our fellowship with Christ, along with this, and perhaps as a result of that, our fellowship with one another. Because we are united to the Lord Jesus Christ, we are united to one another in Christ. Notice the unifying language of Paul. The cup of blessing that we bless, and the bread which we break. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in one loaf, in verse 17. Participation in the Eucharist as a means of grace not only brings the Christian into fellowship with Christ, but it also brings each one of us into fellowship with the whole body of Christ. The one loaf is a symbol of unity and the Holy Communion as a whole is to be a symbol of unity. That is why we need to confess our sins and get our lives straight with our brothers and sisters in Christ before we come to Communion, so we do not make a mockery of this unity. Verse 17 also tells us something of how Com Holy Communion was originally observed. Apparently there was one loaf and each Christian broke off a piece of the loaf as it was passed. Paul's point is clear. To, to participate in Holy Communion is to have fellowship with Christ and Christ's people. The Eucharist is both an expression of our oneness in Christ and is even an agent of that unity, something which promotes and nourishes our oneness in Jesus Christ. There are many members of Christ's body, the church, share a common loaf of bread which they observe at the supper. And in doing so, they illustrate their oneness. And at the same time, we actually strengthen our fellowship with one another in the Lord. This is the one real tangible benefits of the Lord's Supper. It's not merely the fact that we do it at the same time in the same place, but it really actually brings us together, strengthens and nourishes our fellowship and solidarity with one another because of our common connection in Christ. So in this time, even under the shadow of COVID-19, when we can't meet physically, let us celebrate our unity with the Lord and one another. I thank God for all of you. I'd like to end with a prayer from the great leader of the church during World War II, Archbishop William Temple, who helped set up the foundations for the welfare state and the NHS. O Lord Jesus Christ, who prayed for your disciples that they might be one, even as you are one with the Father, draw us to yourself that in common love and obedience to you, we may be united to one another in the fellowship of one spirit, 
that the world may believe that you are the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Intercession is a time when we ask God for help. So let us pray. Right now, we're facing many battles. Lord, we know that you are not the source of bad things because when you finished creating the world, it was very good. After people chose to submit to Satan's authority rather than yours, sin, sickness and death entered into the world. But you sent your son to rescue us and share his victory over sin and death. Thank you. You have promised that if your people humble themselves and repent and seek your face, then you'll forgive us and heal our land. So, Father, we acknowledge that we as a nation have not enthroned you as Lord of all. We have not sought your will and your ways. We repent for not protecting the defenceless and for not pursuing justice and righteousness as much as we could. Forgive us, we pray, and heal our land. We intercede on behalf of those battling with disease, both directly and in a supportive role. Lord, please help. Where there is sadness, bring comfort. And where there is loneliness, companionship. Please renew the strength of those who are exhausted through selflessly caring for others, whether at home, in care homes or hospitals. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Now a prayer of thankfulness for new opportunities. Lord, we see the possibilities arising from a change in spiritual climate despite the physical difficulties. Thank you that sales of the Bible surged in April, as did the number of people praying and the number participating in church services because of online access. Thank you for the countless acts of brotherly kindness and good neighbourliness that have occurred throughout the country and in this benefit in particular. We pray for these signs of spiritual awakening to increase and be sustained beyond the lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for our own spiritual walk. Father, we have asked for more from you, but may we also want more of you. Your son prayed, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Help us not to put our needs above our relationship, to enjoy our fellowship with you daily, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, thank you for being our Father. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
and say a final prayer of blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Bless you and see you again next week. Goodbye. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to fall.